So these are some of the other allowed expenditures that are allowed within our um, income tax. Also sales, operating expenses, depreciation allowance, industrial building, all of these will be allowed. And very importantly, if you spend on all these and you make no profit, we will not run after you at least up to seven years without paying tax. Strategic areas again, I spoke about this earlier. They are listed here, education, manufacturing, transport, hotels and tourism, construction, health and medical care, agriculture, information technology, logistics and warehousing. This is not to say that other areas do not benefit from the exemptions, but for starters, if you're a developer of an industrial park, you pay zero income tax for 10 years. And the conditions for this, I already mentioned, $50 million for non-citizens, and then um, for, for the citizens, and um, uh, depending on where you're investing, 300,000 US dollars, and out of Kampala, just 150,000. So this is a point to note, again, for Ugandans living in the UK. For all your contacts, please mobilize them to come home and invest. Because if you can mobilize the capital and set up an industrial park or a tax-free zone, you can spend 10 years without paying any income tax. The same benefit is extended on those who operate industrial parks. And earlier in the panel discussions, you had uh, people who are setting up Namave. Government invests in the infrastructure and you come and operate in an industrial park. For people who are producing for export, up to 80%, again, you are able to get a refund on the materials that you have used to produce for export because the government is trying to attract. Uh, for an exchange through the exports you make. So 80% exports uh, of finished goods and capital goods will also benefit from this exemption on income tax. Non-profit making organizations, when they are working for charity and for the promotion of the well-being of society, they can also qualify for income tax exemption. And of course, if you're a compliant taxpayer, you can also benefit from being on the withholding tax exemption. This means the 6% that you would pay on every import or every transaction can be paid at once when you are filing your return. Um, rental, I've already explained much about rental. I will not go back. Maybe to add that for non-residents who have rental properties, we withhold a final withholding tax of 15%. So if you are based in the UK, you have a property in Uganda, and you are non-resident in Uganda, and you don't want to go through the hassle uh, of filing returns and so on, there is an option for you. You pay 15% as withholding tax, and also the final uh, payment on that rental property. These are the points I was explaining earlier about the thresholds. Um, and the capital investments required. Um, stamp duty, I've also hinted on this already. You have all your instruments stamp duty free as long as you're investing in these industrial parks or you are a manufacturer in the industrial park. Hospitality uh, developers, I've also mentioned if you're setting up um, a hospital uh, for $5 million, you benefit from the exemption. If you're setting up a hotel for $8 million, uh, US dollars, you benefit from this uh, stamp duty exemption. But very importantly is the point that has been made by General, maybe to lower some of this, we will look at it uh, through a recommendation of a policy change. <coughs> Excise duty uh, is another area where you get an exemption. 
if you're a developer of an industrial park, for all the inputs of developing that, say cement, which pays excise duty, you'll be exempt as long as the mission is to set up such. And this is just a sample of the many industries that are springing up in Uganda. So government gives you land, they give you the incentives of uh, tax exemptions, yours is to build uh, the infrastructure and, no, they also provide the infrastructure, yours is to attract investors to come and set up factories. Very, very lucrative uh, area, especially for foreign investors. Um, Customs exemptions, again, I will just uh, rush through them because I had mentioned them earlier. You get exemptions on raw materials of goods for uh, export through a duty drawback. You pay and you claim a refund at the point of export. For local products that we need, like excise bukes, there is not exemption on VAT. Uh, duty remission for some of the strategic uh, industries like inputs for textiles and garments, you also pay zero rate. So there's duty remission uh, for motor vehicle tires, batteries, and glucose syrup. These are some of the products where you don't have to pay import duties. Vehicles of the tourism sector, I mentioned that earlier, they exempt washing machines and others. The list is not comprehensive, but when you go onto our website, you will find a very comprehensive list. Briefly, about VAT deferment, if you're importing any machinery for use in these industrial parks, you will not have to pay VAT upfront, you can pay it after use. And this is at the East African level. VAT deferment under chapter 84 and 85 of the East African Community Common External Tariff exempts any importation of material of, of plant and machinery from import duties and VAT is deferred. Uh, oil and gas, this is a booming sector, a new sector in our country. And again, for almost everything that touches that sector has an exemption on VAT. We call it deemed VAT. In other words, any input that you are buying for the sector, as long as it is for the sole and exclusive use in this sector, you, it will be deemed that the VAT was paid, so you do not have to pay it. And that covers machinery, spares, inputs, as long as they are for the use in that sector. Under the ESC, they have been covered under deemed VAT. Now, in addition to all those exemption efforts, there are very specific administrative efforts towards attracting investment. One of them is the one-stop point center that I referred to earlier to make life easy for investors. All of us who are supposed to facilitate setting up for an investor are under one-stop point under the investment, Uganda Investment Authority. You come to us, we will be able to expeditiously handle your issues and help you set up in the possible, shortest possible time. As an organization, URA, we have put most of our services online to make life easy for our investors. So you can file online, you can pay online, you can make your inquiries online. Should you not find enough answers online, you can reach out to us through our client support. We have a touch point, again, where you send your requests and are handled online. And uh, under very exceptional circumstances, if you are still not satisfied, you are still welcome to walk in. We have uh, an open door policy to meet you and listen. Then, of course, we are trying our best to sensitize, and that's the reason I'm here. But even within the country, we are trying to reach out to the citizens to tell them their tax responsibilities and their rights so that they are not... Uh, they are not, they are not uh, taken advantage of because of the window of not knowing. Should you not be sure about any financial transactions and its implications, we offer free of charge 
private rulings on any financial uh, or investment transactions that may attract tax. So you want to dispose a building, you may want to know, does capital gains tax apply, does VAT apply? Write to us, we will guide you. So that by the time you enter into a contract, you know the tax implications. We do that for free, and it is to make sure that we don't jump on our taxpayer when they transacted and did not charge a certain tax because they were not sure it's applicable. Finally, we have a window for settling dispute should for any reason not agree with you on a tax matter. We call it ADR, which is Alternative Dispute Resolution. And this has paid off for, the, for, 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 for some time when we started emphasizing this window and also opened it up to the taxpayers and came up with proper regulations We've been able to collect money in excess of $2 trillion that was previously held in disputes in the different courts of law, uh, which take money and which take time. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I want to remind you of the strategic sectors of government, which you can come in and invest in any time, and you pay minimum tax but you grow your business very quickly because they are very profitable. Commercial agriculture and agro-processing, medical services, education, tourism, oil and gas. Among the many sectors, these have stood out to be very lucrative. Whoever has set up here has not disappointed, and I'm happy there were presenters who confirmed this earlier like uh, Alvan Blanche uh, and others who are confirming about uh, the lucrativeness of these sectors, but also their experience in our country. And in terms of timing, I think this is the best time for anyone who, who wants to invest in Uganda, because the tax incentives are in place, the testimonies of those who have invested are here, and I'm sure uh, you can have a one-on-one -on -one with those who are already in the country. But also very importantly, the administrative processes are constantly improving. That is why, as a revenue administrator, I came to join this discussion to tell you that we will not be looking at you for your direct taxes. We will be looking at you for creating employment and creating purchasing power in our economy, and then we'll go for indirect taxes. But also, we are constantly benchmarking and looking at how to improve our services and our offerings to our taxpayers. So I happened to spend uh, two days before this conference having discussions with our counterparts from the HMRC. Those of you who pay taxes in this country know how efficient uh, uh, His Majesty uh, Customs and Revenue Service is. So we are looking and trying to learn from the best in terms of reliance on data, in terms of improvement of our services, being more polite. Uh, I think the MC earlier referred to that there are some discussions that go on. Maybe some of them in the past may not have been as polite, as smooth as you may have wanted them. But I'm here to assure you that Uganda Revenue Authority is undergoing a serious transformation. One, to improve our service offering, to promote transparency and integrity, uh, and also to make sure that we become facilitators of investment rather than just absolute tax collectors, because we know that we will collect more tax by promoting investment. So I thank you again for the opportunity, for everything that I've shared in brief, because of the small time that I've been allotted, you can find out more from any of these channels. Our first point of reference is our website. If you just log on to that ura.go.ug, you'll find on the first page the detail of all the incentives. The last gazette on incentives was made in 2022 you'll see what is there. If you want to find out 
any additional information, that is a WhatsApp call. You can go there and chat with us, and we'll give you uh, answers. Just remember to put plus 256 on every call to Uganda. Sorry, that should have been included there. So plus 256 and that number as it is. Social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, we are all on those platforms and you can reach us. Touchpoint is working well. Emails and those toll free lines, you can reach us and we share. I thank you very much for listening to me. I thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity and I'm ready to take any further question that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Commissioner General, thank you so much. In fact, that it's you yourself presenting. We are deeply honored. Um, members, questions, please. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. It was very enlightening and uh, informative. And uh, I just want to, not a question, but it is just sharing an experience with the URA. Uh, sometimes back, I was doing a lot of business in Uganda, and uh, I ended up with uh, some uh, unpaid taxes, which were going beyond 10 years. So anyway, that was resolved with a very uh, good uh, approach that you are uh, responded with, and it was resolved, the ledger and all that. But actually, I want to give you compliments. The thing is that about two years ago, I got a credit note <laughs> from URA. <laughs> <laughs> which was about 8 million, and I didn't know about it. And they did this credit 10 years ago. So, I mean, I can just applaud your integrity. You know, this is amazing, you know? This is, this is really good. So, I haven't taken the credit yet, because they said they won't give a cash. <laughs> now, can you explain this to me? Because they say they only give a credit for my future taxes, which, which won't be there because I am a non-resident of Uganda. So that credit will remain with you. Can you account for it? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Any other question while uh, Commissioner General responds to this one? Okay, there's one at the back of the room. Uh, maybe, Commissioner, you can start responding while I walk in the room. So. That's right. Thank you very much, uh, my brother, for that compliment and the information. Now, your point has made me remember some two areas that I should have highlight. For a long time, we've been having um, an issue of discrepancies in the understanding of our ledgers. How we understand the ledgers is not how our taxpayers understand them. This was as a result of technology, migration, um, and re really something happened and our data was not that accurate. So if you're one of the people who we may have written to you demanding for taxes that were not accurate, we, 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 are, we, we, we apologize about that. But we set in place a team uh, about two years ago to review all ledgers and it is the effort of that team that has been discovering either and given credit or taxes that have been due. So they go through the ledgers, they reconcile, and afterwards, if you have a credit, they inform you. If you owe us, we still inform you, but more firm about what we think you owe the organization. And this team has done a great job, so I'm happy to hear feedback from London. Now, in terms of that unreturned money, we will make ways of transferring it to accounts. Um, we may have, uh, you know, acknowledged that we owe, and we have said you come and pick. Of course, when you have someone who you owe, if they don't pick, you can still use that money for something else. But with this input, let's put a channel for those who are not returning and who can give us an account and we send their money wherever they are. But the second point I wanted to mention, in this 
laws that have been passed this financial year, there is a waiver of interest and penalty for all those companies and businesses who owe revenue and paid revenue. Because that has been another area of conflict. You start when you're owing like 100 million in unpaid tax, but because of the passage of time, that money uh, attracts interest and penalties for late payment, and it becomes sometimes unaffordable. So if there is anybody in this room or people you can reach who knows that he owes Uganda Revenue Authority or the government of Uganda and paid taxes under the current law and thanks to our members of parliament, there is a law which is in the tax procedures code, section 40D. And this section waives all interest and all penalty for taxpayers who are willing to settle their liabilities. So anybody who knows that he owes and there is interest and penalty and maybe it has been a struggle to pay that, please approach us. The problem with this law, it has a short window of up to 31st December this year. So if you are to take advantage of this, please come before 30th December, pay your principal tax, and then the penalty and interest will be waived. Thank you for your point. It reminded me that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, uh, question? Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, my question is about concessions for hybrid and electric cars for returning residents or returning citizens. Thanks. Um, if we don't have any question, then okay. Is, when you say returning, is that brand new or used? Okay, just to clarify that because they mentioned something earlier. Hi, Ray Wilburn, East African Solutions. Um, so our company does some work sometimes uh, opening up supply chains in and out of Uganda. And uh, sometimes our counterparts in Uganda complain that there's sometimes inconsistencies with how things are treated at the border in terms of uh, papers and charges. I was wondering, that um, list that you put up there, is there a, a resource where it makes clear exactly what's supposed to be presented when things are moving across the border? And if there's a problem, is there like a hotline that somebody can call instead of just having to magic money out of somewhere and pay whatever is being asked for to make something cross the border? <laughs> Great question. I like the magic money portion. Commissioner, over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much for those two uh, very good questions. For returning citizens, there has already been an incentive or a law that enables you to come back home with your vehicle, which you have been using wherever you've been. The only point to take note of, please don't bring one that is older than... Uh, 15 years, because it will not be allowed in, that is now outlawed as contraband. If it is beyond nine years, you can bring it, but it will pay an environmental levy because it's polluting our environment. In other words, if you have your brand new car or one or two years old, return with it, it will be received tax-free because you're a returning citizen. That is already in the law, and you can take advantage of it. The only distinction is, when you drive it or you get it registered, it will be having a red number plate. So wherever you meet it, you'll know this car never paid tax, but it's okay. It will be your car. If you want to sell it to another person, you will have to, that person will have to uh, move it into uh, ordinary number plates and they will have to pay tax. So you have to own it and drive it. It's for your use. Now... If you're, planning, if you're planning to bring an electric car or even an electric border border or motorcycle, the new law now has allowed these ones to come in tax-free. This is just to promote the green economy, as we discussed earlier. So whether you're a citizen returning or you're an investor, you'll bring these cars or border borders duty-free under the new law. Then the question by Ray of East African Solutions. We have 
I've made reference to the exemptions of customs or the law that uh, regulates all custom duties. It is no longer Ugandan law. It is an East African law. So if you go under the IACMA, the East African Community Management Customs Act, and you read the fifth schedule, this is both online and you can find it in print. There's a comprehensive list of items that are tax-free. All items, raw materials for the different countries of East Africa that are considered strategic have been exempted under the fifth schedule. So if you read, you'll find a comprehensive list there. And again, it is your right to ask and get clear questions on the tax you are paying and for what items. So the lines that I showed there, one, they are toll free, two, you'll get a response. The touch point is a very transparent form of communication because when you send your email right from the commissioner general to the commissioners and to the last officer, we all have visibility on what you're going through. Utilize these platforms to highlight to us any challenges that you get because we are a young institution and we know that we are dealing with some challenges. So when you find people varying positions, maybe their intentions are not very noble. Rise through those platforms and let's deal with it as a question of discipline. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, just on top of that, let me just uh, give a bit of a reference and I'm going to plug uh, private sector foundation in this picture. If you remember many years ago, those of you who remember Uganda, we used to have the traders downtown strike very often. They no longer strike for a very interesting reason. Through PSFU, they can get to Commissioner General anytime, right? So all tra trade issues that have been happening as resolved before they even become an issue. So that's testament that there is a communication channel but secondly, you can become a member of PSFU and the channel becomes even faster. Anyway, that, that's a plug. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll talk later. <laughs> the commissioner, we had a question on uh, electric. Does the law uh, 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 cover hybrid vehicles as well? Is that a yes? Yes, it is. Electric and hybrid. So if, we have a, if I bring myself a hybrid, mm. it's... Zero tax. It is. Okay. Then the other question I have, Commissioner, in the morning we talked about, I think, the industrial parks. And you talked about the, the differences if, if, if I'm a foreigner investing, the minimum, and then if I have a partnership. Can you just elaborate that one very quickly? Because there's something I wanted to build on to. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for very quick clarification on the issue of uh, returning citizens, there is one small condition which I should have mentioned, otherwise oh, yeah. you run into trouble if you don't fulfill it. You need to have owned this car for at least a year. Okay? So you are a returning citizen, you want to bring your vehicle duty free, make sure you've owned it and the ownership is, ev is evidenced in your logbook for at least 12 months. Anything short of that, you not uh, get the exemption and you know the reasons why the law is that strict. So if your friend says, bring me a car and you buy it tomorrow and you put it on the boat, then you won't get that exemption benefit. Now, very quickly, uh, uh, comrade, you asked a question on... The industrial parks you mentioned yes, in the yes, morning on about the, industrial the five million just, and just, the different... Just, uh, flip back and... Uh, and, and, and present that, that slide. It's one of the beginning slides mm -hmm. where there are some requirements. I want to quote them as they are under the law. The, 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 while they're bringing back my vehicle being that from what I saw, my basic, mm -hmm. that if somebody partnered with a Ugandan, the minimum requirement would be lower. That, uh, that's, that's right. I just wanted to quote the exact figure because for some investments, it's $10 million for a Ugandan where the foreign investment will pay $50 million, and that is for the industrial park. Please go ahead to the area of incentives. Um, yeah, 
So as they bring up that slide, uh, if you are involved in the development of an industrial park and you are a citizen, your, your minimum requirement is $10 million in terms of capital investment. The other requirements are 70% of raw materials uh, where they are available. If they are not, you can definitely use imported and also 70% for employment. Now, if you're... Sorry, there is a problem with that. I, I would quote it from my head then. Then, if you are a, 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 a citizen and you are involved, please go ahead, 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 ahead. Ahead, please. Okay, ahead, ahead. Furthermore, furthermore, there, first stop there. Just step one. Okay, so minimum investment of $10 million for foreigners and 300000 for citizens, or 150 again for citizens, investments up country will make you benefit from the VAT exemption. But if you step behind one slide back, you'll see the income tax requirements. No, further back, there. Okay, so for further back, sorry. Back again. Further back, sorry. Okay, I, I seem to be lost in my own slide. But there is another one which requires the investment to be $50 million for a foreigner and $10 million for a citizen. So what does this mean? If you want to take benefit of the citizenship, uh, uh -huh. this, is, this is the one I was looking for. Thank you very much. Okay, so for a develop of an industrial park, minimum investment is going to be $50 million. But for a citizen, um, the minimum investment is 300,000 again and 150 for any East African citizen. So if you want to take advantage of this, you can either register your company as local and uh, you take benefit of this window, but you can also uh, come in on your own, the threshold will be higher. So it really, I think this law is flexible to benefit partnerships like from the UK. If you're a Ugandan citizen and you manage to get a partner here and you convince them to come and set up an industrial park in Uganda, all you need to invest is 300,000 US dollars for Kampala or 150 uh, if it's outside Kampala. And the registration details are legal. I think you have to have a certain share for the company to be considered to be local or for it to be considered foreign. Uh, the lawyers will guide you. But this is a window that you can take advantage of through partnering with the locals to have a lower threshold. But if you want to set up an industrial big, an industrial park, you know, big in terms of the factories it can accommodate, then you can as well walk it alone through the 50 million uh, US dollars investment. I don't know if that answers you. That, that does. That does. Uh, it was a question that I got from the floor earlier.